how much attention do you pay to the stories of like interactions with other beings that are accounted for? I mean, there's books and movies and documentaries right. about this kind of stuff. How much tend like UFOs and nukes being around nuclear weapons, weapons shutting them down? There's a store, famous story of uh, a UFO landing in Africa in front of a school and yep. communicating with children mm -hmm. telepathically yep. about right. the environment and yep. the, yep. the dangers of technology. What do you make of, of those stories? And how much, how much credibility do you give them? So this entire topic is in disrepute in general among elites, elite academics and elites of all sorts. So if I'm going to venture into this subject, I want to do it very carefully so that my thoughts won't be wasted. If I am sloppy about this, then I will be tainted with the same disrepute that everybody else has been who touches the subject. Right. right. So I'm, I'm very eager to be methodical and careful here in exactly how I do this. Right. So, um, that means I want to sort of logically lay out the space of possibilities and then lay out sort of the general inference task and then place myself somewhere in that set of tasks and say which things I'm doing, which things I'm not, I'm not going to present myself an expert on all the tasks that are relevant right. for thinking about this topic. But I will venture into some of them and say, for some of them, I have relevant expertise and I will speak to those. Okay, so uh, first of all, we just say, look, there are things people think they see, right? And they have to have some explanation and we can categorize the kind of explanations they could be, right? So for example, they could be aliens, sure. Or they could be just some other hidden earth organization who has capabilities beyond what they've advertised. Um, or it could all just be mistakes and delusions, drunk drunkards and blowhards and, you know, people that. trying to get attention. Right. Or there could be some organized hoax behind it all. Somebody's like planning and purposely may having people lie and putting things up there that look like things and just trying on purpose to make right. us think of something. Right. Right. Those are the four main categories of explanation. <clears throat> right. And we're interested in judging, which is the truth. <laughs> So in general, what we want is what's called a Bayesian analysis here. That is, we for each of these categories of explanation, we want what's called a likelihood and we want a prior. A prior is what's the chance of that scenario, ignoring all this evidence, just a priori. What would be the chance you would think of something like this happening? And the likelihood is, given that this theory was true, how likely is it that you'd see the sort of things you'd see? That's, and then you basically, once you have a likelihood and a prior for each of these, then you multiply those two and you do a weighted average and you get your posterior IC, which theory you believe. So mm. that's our task. We need likelihoods and we need priors. Okay. Um, so I am more of an expert on the priors. That is the likelihoods have to involve looking at these cases in particular in some detail, right? Because we're talking about how likely is it that these theories would account for the particular things people see. Whereas the prior is just about what kind of things could have happened in the universe. What, what kind of things do ever happen? You know, that's, and so my expertise as someone who's done physics and astrophysics and economics, et cetera, puts me, at, I can speak to the prior at least, at least for some of these and less so to the likelihoods. Now I'll just say, I've looked at enough, you know, UFO reports to say it's more compelling than the data I can find for fairies and ghosts. If I go look up online, what's the best evidence for fairies and ghosts? And they don't impress me very much right. by comparison. Okay. I can also say in the past, there were things that were equally dis similarly disreputed to UFOs that in fact turned out to be true. So once asteroids, people thought rocks falling from the sky was crazy. Um, ball lightning is something people have thought was pretty crazy, except they made it in the lab and they decided it must be true, even though the actual like evidence of it not outside the lab still looks pretty weak. But they made it in the lab, so they figured, okay, I guess that must be true. Mm -hmm. And then there were these very high-level lightning, pink lightning, that looks kind of like an octopus that people said they saw a long time. The first pilot said they saw and people thought that was crazy. And then a couple of decades ago, NASA took pictures. They said, oh, like, okay, I guess it's real. So that would be my context is to say like, just because this is in disrepute doesn't mean it couldn't be 
because we've often thought things were crazy and then changed our mind about them. So, and that, um, you know, the actual evidence I can see, I think again, it's, it's better than ghosts and fairies. Okay. Okay. But how much better is what you need an expert to go into those details for? But what I do want to say is the prior is high enough that you should be taking the data seriously. So, so think about a murder trial. Okay. Okay. In a murder trial, they claim A murdered B, right? Now, if the prior on that was crazy low, you would just say, no, that's crazy. I'm not even going to think about that, right? So how low is the prior in a murder trial? Well, let's say roughly on average, one out of a thousand people is killed. And they might have a thousand other people nearby who could plausibly be the one who did it. Okay. So I'd say the prior is roughly one in a million for any given murder accusation. Okay. So a one in a million prior is something that evidence can typically overcome. <laughs> That's not so crazy unlikely. It's not like one in a quadrillion prior where you'd say, you know, go away. That's silly. It's high enough that you got to take it seriously. So my rough guess for the UFOs as aliens prior is roughly one in a thousand. Now that's quite a bit stronger than the typical murder trial, which means you, you got to look at the evidence. You can't just dismiss it just like you would in a murder trial. Right. Now, now if you have an accusation in a murder trial, you don't stop there. You don't just say, well, okay, you accused and so they're guilty, right? You have to look at the evidence, right? Yes. And so similarly here, just because this is in the realm of high enough plausible probability that it could be true doesn't make it true. It just means you got to look at the evidence. So I could walk through my calculation for one in a thousand prior, but I might also just mention well, one of the other categories I think has an even higher prior, which is the hoax category. That is the U S government and other governments have at times organized big hoaxes of capabilities of the sort. And, um, I would give that a 1% chance. That's still like 99% chance. No. Right. But I'd still say that's the sort of thing that does happen at times. And so you got to take that seriously as well as a possible explanation. And then again, it comes down to looking at the data, like how plausible is it that, you know, they could pull it off for the particular things we see. Mm -hmm. I'm not very impressed with these delusion, you know, um, mistakes theory. I just, that okay. seems to me. It's hard. It's just harder to to account for all these stories as all delusions and mistakes. Something more systematic would seem to be going on. I, I would judge, but mm. again, there's several other candidates. What do you think the the probability is that there are private organizations, aerospace organizations, companies um, that hold information, knowledge, or technology that they are withholding from the public or academia that could explain some of these anti-gravity sightings. So, I mean, if you combine a theory of saying there really are aliens and then some people really got that technology, now you're, you're, you're basically combining the two of these theory categories, right? If you just want to say there are advanced organizations out there that have advanced technology, they didn't get it from aliens. They just made it up themselves. Then, then it's hard to understand how they could be much more advanced than everybody else, because we know a lot about technology and how it advances in the world and how, you know, it, ha it happens by diffusion and people hearing of other things. So mm -hmm. we just almost never see enormous advances by some sides compared to others, right? it's usually within a range of the kinds of things we expect. So um, the kinds of abilities reported for UFOs do seem to me substantially beyond the sort of things you might expect, at least, you know, for several decades ago. Now, more recently, there's this technology whereby you might say, send a laser to some place in space, in the sky, in the atmosphere and say, heat it up and then make a little plasma there and then like be able to draw that. And then basically like if on TV screen, draw a image in space and then move it around and you could move an image that you drew around very quickly. So that seems to be an ability that's near feasible now mm. that could explain UFOs, but 
that wouldn't explain UFOs seen in 1960 or something. Right. <laughs> that would have to only be explaining very recent UFOs because that's a very recent capability that apparently people have now is the ability to draw. Like a laser pointer. Right, basically. But except it doesn't go against a wall. It stops at a place in space and draws Ooh, something there. Right. Um, that's exactly how some of these uh, pilots have been describing the things that they've been seeing, like Commander right. Fravor and Ryan Graves. So, so from, from very recent observations, that becomes a more plausible story, but not for more ancient observations. Aerospace organizations, similar to Lockheed Martin, containing some sort of technology that could explain this stuff would have to be directly, it would have to be because they discovered some sort of alien technology. It wouldn't be something that was just created here if on it Earth. Was far more advanced than the stuff that everybody else has which it is right i mean i i I mean i don't know (laughs) if it's true if it is true it it would it is clearly way more advanced than the kind of propulsion that we have so i didn't finish describing the most plausible scenario so there's another thing we know about ufos that you would need to explain to explain ufos as aliens and it's a crucial thing many people have noted which is they could have either been completely invisible or completely visible. Those were, I mean, a hundred million, you know, year more advanced civilization than ours. They could have just been completely dark orbiting and seeing everything without being at all visible. Or they could have just you know, shown up on the White House lawn, as they say, and just been completely visible. So apparently they are not doing either of those things. <laughs> so we need a, an explanation for why they're doing this weird thing of hanging out at the edge of visibility. Mm-hmm to sort of make themselves be somewhat visible, but not more visible. That's weird. (laughs) So, you know, if I weren't trying to explain that part, I might give a higher prior (laughs) to UFOs as aliens, but I need to explain that part too. Because again, the the other weird thing about aliens is like, why aren't they in the rest of the universe, right? (laughs) Why didn't they take over the galaxy? Why are they only here and nowhere else? That's the first thing to explain. And so we postulated for that that they have this rule against expansion and then that's why they're here but then we also need to explain why are they hanging out at the edge of visibility not making themselves aware to everybody right but also not completely hiding exactly (laughs) right why be partially visible what's the point right because they clearly could have chosen anything else they wanted um so we want to explain that and we want to do that in the context of what we know of their motives to be here right right they're here to convince us not to expand mm. without killing us, right? Because they could have killed us. Those are the other things we know. So they somehow are going to use this method of hanging out the edge of our visibility to convince us not to expand and not kill us. That's, that's the purpose of this. 